So, like, I'll keep it very, very simple and very linear. Uh, so, this is yes. maybe so. I plan to do this in maybe three hours, obviously, one hour today or less than an hour, something like that. And then, three, three uh, installments, we will finish this, okay? uh, whatever we want to do. So, some matrix, matrix theory. <clears throat> so, uh, let us start with definition. So what is a matrix? So what, what, uh, so to you, what is a matrix? Right? So you can, uh, in a way, it's just an uh -huh. array. So it's yes. just, uh, yeah, just uh, M by M cross N array. Array is something which obviously you're familiar with. So it's a M cross N <clears throat> array. And that we will denote by this. Okay. However, I mean, something which we usually don't do in the high school maths is uh, we don't look at the collection of all objects of a certain kind. Okay. And that is, we will start to do that. Okay. So here, uh, matrix theory. So here we will be looking at matrices uh, with maybe real and you know complex also possibly okay complex entries. So we will not restrict ourselves to real entries. Okay, it can be real or complex. Obviously, uh, later on you will see things. But this thing, but yeah, as I said we will be looking at the collection of all matrices as well. Hmm? So M and R, okay. So I think one more person is planning to join. So seems like she has joined. <clears throat> okay. Let's wait. Uh, Shirin, uh, am I audible to you? Good evening. Hmm. Yeah, so I do know your audio is off. Anyway, so let us continue. Uh, yeah. So this is the thing here. We will be looking at this collection. Collection of all. Collection of all M by N matrices with let's say real inputs. So this is this stands for this stands for this set. What is this set? A. A is a M by N matrix. This is usually missing in the high school books and the high school perspective, right? We look at one function, but we don't look at all possible functions. Okay. It turns out that if you want to understand an object, looking at all possible, you know, looking at that family in which it is contained in, obviously it can be contained in larger and larger families and, you know, it could be all very, very complicated. But if you look at the correct family where it is contained in for that situation, then the interaction of that element with the family can actually help you to understand that matrix, that element, that function, that permutation. You see what I'm saying, right? This is something which is missing in the, which is not there in the, you know, when we do the high school, because it's a little complicated. But that, that's what we want to use to give ourselves an edge. Yeah, but obviously this class I'll go straight forward and so yeah, I want to continue, but I'm just uh, I don't know if uh, uh, she didn't can hear us or not or yeah because uh, she's missing it then I'm just not good maybe. <laughs> hmm. But anyways, I'll have to continue. Okay. Yeah, I think she's having some network problems. So Nagesh, is this clear to you? The collection of all M by N matrices we are considering, like that entire collection? This is a collection of uh, different kinds of matrices, right? Uh, yeah. Different kinds means, yeah, different kinds means that, yeah, they have different entries 
right? Mm. Uh, but they are all of the of or they are all m by n. So that m and n is fixed. That we are not changing. Same order. Okay. Yeah. Like so. Otherwise, I, like I'm not saying that m belongs to n. I'm not do, allowing you to range this m. No. Right. Mm. That is fixed. Yeah. So that's the appropriate family we are looking at. Okay. And then you will see this. Uh, what is the R? Uh, yeah. So this whatever I put here would be like the would be the place yeah. from where the coefficients are coming. Of the real number, real number. Yeah, in this case, it's real numbers. But then again, suitably, you could put complex numbers there. If you're doing some uh, discrete mathematics, you could put integers there, right? It's, okay. Yeah, it, it's, it can do a lot of things. But for us, we will be keeping it very linear and just following the chapter. So we just... Now, I will make a slight change. Okay, never mind, leave it. What we will be doing is, you know that you can, uh, you know, you can add members of this family. So can you, can you, can you give me an interpretation of what I've written? What that means? It means is that- it, uh, The summation of all the matrices in, in that collection. Oh, that would be that may may not make sense, right? Because it's yeah. Uh, what I am saying is that I am putting a so in abstract terms. First, I'll say it in the most abstract way in some sense, is that on this set, on this set of all m by n matrices, I am putting a binary relation, which is addition. I'm putting a sorry. I'm putting a binary operation, which is addition. Right. This is a binary operation on this set, on this collection. Like, you know, you take the collection of natural numbers and you write plus here. What does this mean? It means that this is a set and you have a binary operation on that, which is addition. What is it? It takes two numbers and gives you a number. Binary yes. operation, right? But in simple terms, all I'm saying is that this collection of matrices is equipped with a operation, which is the addition operation. This just says that you can add two matrices. And how you can do that? In the most natural way, just what you know. Is it fine? Yeah. So it's really yes. nothing. I mean, it is just the symbol that I'm using, which maybe yeah, you don't use. Okay. So all right. So this is nothing. But however, it is not just this. There is also some kind of a multiplication there as well. Can you tell me what this is? So you have understood the plus sign. Plus sign means that it is a binary operation on that collection which just means that you can take two elements of that collection and you can add them where addition we understand what it means and get another thing in that collection that is important. Now, what does this dot mean? Is it scalar multiplication? Yes, it is scalar multiplication because you cannot multiply two M by N matrices in general. Yes. Can you? You cannot. So I don't need to tell you that. Right? So. Uh, this dot just means scalar multiplication. So this dot stands for what it does is we don't usually write like this. For example, it takes two and it takes one, one, zero, zero, and it gives you just multiplies this matrix by the scalar, which means multi which as a rule is multiplying all the, okay. Obviously we never write like this, right? Though strictly speaking, this is what is happening. It's a function which takes in a number and a matrix and gives you a number, but who thinks like that? We don't usually think like that, right? We just say that it is just two dot. So I suppose that is not a problem. Okay. All right, so that's it. This is the collection. And they will think it, think like this. Okay. Now you see, you tell me that under this, and this is probably also just a way to think about, um, just think and tell me uh, the following things, okay. Um, what is the additive identity? Sorry, additive identity. Yeah, this is probably is yes. just this think about it. I mean, you probably know it, but I'll just bring my phone that maybe uh, she's trying to call. So some connection problem. So yeah, 
just look at that. Okay, so what is the additive identity? Um, it's a bit null matrix with all zero. Yes. Matrix with all zero. Yes, it's a matrix with all zeros. And so you also then know that for every matrix, there is also a inverse, right? And the additive, the additive inverse of every matrix, right? So for a matrix A, if you take the matrix minus A, which you know what I what it means, right? Is it will give you the additive identity okay so you see this collection of matrices has an addition it also then has a subtraction okay obviously you already know this right so that's it like this is all I wanted to say it's nothing but just putting things you know properly and so this basically means that there is an addition there is a subtraction meaning that for everything there is a additive inverse which means that there is a subtraction. There is a scalar multiplication. Uh, the addition is nice, you know, so you could, you already obviously know these things. Uh, this is equal to, one has to be careful because uh, time to time you get operation questions, binary operations, which are not associated. But we know these things are true. And they basically come from the fact that in numbers, when you add, they are associative. It comes, it stems from those things. So it's really nothing to talk about here, right? This is fine. And so we basically say that this forms a vector space. That's what we say. We say this because this is a set which has this nice operations, you know, which addition and scalar multiplication is called a vector space. But we will not need to uh, use that perspective. So I'll not be going into that too much. Um, just let me see what is. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so I can talk about that, but uh, let me not do that. Let me do it slightly differently. So now I, what I want to do is, I want to make this square matrix, make them square matrices. So can you tell me what extra or something you can get if you do them, if you make them square matrices? Is there something more you can do with these matrices? I can multiply. Yes, exactly, right? So the point is that you could still multiply even if you did not have square matrices, right? So if you have a M by N matrix, and uh, you obviously know the rule for multiplying matrices, though you may not know why that rule is, why is it? But in a way, there is no answer to that. I mean, because it works, you see that rule is useful, but one can arrive at that rule rather naturally, but even just from system of equations, one can come. So just know that maybe even the knowledge of this thing that that rule arrives is naturally from, you know, even if you like, so you take a system of equations and you, 
uh, write it as a matrix that roughly you understand right and now uh, you do certain operations the system of equations while solving and that corresponds to doing operations on the rows of the matrix right now doing operations on the rows of the matrix is a combinatorial thing right and you would want to algebraize it you want to formalize it right and for that you introduce a multiplication which you know which converts that algebraic operation of switching rows and so on into a formal multiplication you see that is all okay that is all even what adding numbers is also combinatorial right but we make it we define we put addition as a com as a algebraic rule and then we do so it is like that and that's how that rule comes naturally and as many other rules they follow and things like that okay but what do you mean by combinatorial yes because uh, you when you combinatorial in the sense that uh, when you are solving a system of equations in a way it is a combinatorial thing in the sense that you do some combinatorial operations on the rows you you take a row you multiply it with two and you add it to another row yeah this is like a it's like an algorithm right it's like a small step in an in an algorithm right then you take two rows you swap them right so these are like so, so these are operations which are not algebraic right yeah but then you want to define a multiplication which converts this thing into an operation into an algebraic operation yeah so this switching of two rows instead of saying it in words you want to talk about it as multiplying this matrix with this matrix so that the effect is that for one of the matrices the rows get switched okay and to convert this i think this algebraic this this combinatorial operation of switching two rows into an algebraic thing is why that multiplication rule is introduced okay okay, okay. Yeah. this is the kind of things okay but we will not go into it at least now we just want to just want to tell you what you already know i think is that but just having that picture may help you to know what can be true in a given problem you would know okay this is what it should be true and this is why it should this is how it should be true and then you can just you know convert it into elementary kind of you know just know at least uh, then what to do sort of even in elementary language but just to have a, even a vague picture because one doesn't have the time to go into all that now so but you know that when you multiply this you know the rule and so you know that it is m by m cross p okay obviously how well you know the rule will be tested when you have to prove things like associativity and so on but you know this rule and you know that by the rule you know you it is true so multiplication can be done with uh, non square matrices as well but if uh, it is square matrices then the multiplication is uh, is nice in the sense that it remains in the same family right and you can multiply any two members of this family those things are really nice right i mean any two members of the family you can just multiply them and it will still be end up in the family so we have two operations okay and you know that whenever you have two operations you need to understand you know whether they mix with each other or not right so in the sense that very simply what i mean is that distributive law right you will need this otherwise is meaningless to have two operations you will need this and this is also true you can just prove it right okay so distributive laws are there this is fine yeah. i mean just putting thing putting these things in the front is probably because see you, you don't you won't need any advanced knowledge of matrices but knowing these things very clearly and in front you know that these are the things which you can use okay simple things like this so we have this collection and we have this nice uh, yeah nice collection <clears throat> uh now the thing is that when you have three matrices when you when you uh, when you can freely multiply matrices then the question comes that uh, look this is a binary operation right so you will you can one can say that yeah you have only told me how uh, can we you have only told me the rule to multiply two things at a time right how do i use this rule to multiply three things at a time 
This is the same question that comes when we do basic arithmetic in class two, three, right? Uh, right? Because you see, addition is a binary operation. Nobody ever, nobody knows how to add three numbers. We only add two numbers at a time, right? In the sense, right? You understand. But then it turns out coincidentally or not, you know, in a way, right? It is in a way, it is a nice fact that this is true, right? This is true. Right? So this is true for all numbers so you can write, but the proof of that actually becomes a little interesting. It's not completely trivial, right? To prove it, that it happens for all natural numbers. It's not an axiom, one can prove it. But, but anyways, we, that's fine, we assume that, okay? Here we are saying that the same thing is, and the same thing is true for multiplication also there. We are saying that the same thing is true here for matrix multiplication as well. It is not a trivial fact, right? Is it obvious? It is not obvious, right? That it is associative. So it is not obvious that when you multiply, obviously for addition, maybe for a second one can say it's obvious, but for multiplication it's not obvious that uh, when you multiply to make, I'm sorry, using the wrong notation. Yeah. This and yeah. Yeah, this. So we should prove this. Yeah, so show this. And obviously I will be proving it for square matrices, but you can obviously just copy the same proof more or less for general uh, matrices, right? General order. Associativity is a profound thing. It's not uh, something, it's not, I mean, it happens, it's a very interesting thing that it happens. When it happens, it doesn't always happen. Means that you can think of binary operations which are not associative. Okay, but point is that this this allows you to multiply three matrices, right? So if this was not equal, then there would be a problem, right? Then given three matrices, how do you multiply them? Then you have to ask: Should I multiply A and B first, and then multiply it with C, or should I multiply B and C first, and then multiply it with A? Right? That question comes up, right? But that does a question does not come up if they are equal, right? And that's why it's interesting. So try to prove this. Hmm? This will test the understanding of uh, matrix multiplication. So have you ever proved the associativity? Have you ever taken up that task to prove the associativity? Uh, not yeah. <laughs> yeah, so try to do that because there is, a, there is a, a lot of usage in actually be proving it because a lot of times our hands are tied. We have nothing but to just, uh, just do the calculations and one has to then get be comfortable with the calculations to begin with to do them. And that is what it is all about, just right to be comfortable with that. So let's do it. So let's say that A is equal to uh, AIG, because see, if you read it, you will be able to follow it from a book. Okay, but doing it on your own is, is really what is in a way matters. Okay. So this is AIJ and they're all N by N matrices. So, and similarly B is BIJ and C is CIJ. Okay, and you know the, where I and J range is from. Okay, so let us look at the LHS. Okay. So this, so what do we want to show? We want to show that two N by N matrices are equal. So how do, how do you show such things? 
well there is a not much choice you have to take uh, do look at their uh, some entry right just look at their igth entry of this matrix and show that it is equal to the igth entry of the matrix on the rhs right yeah yes yes these are two matrices so one has to first be clear of how they want to do it and this is one of the ways i am selling telling um yeah so simply just just run the run do it like a machine so the igth entry of this would be so what would it be so what's the rule of igth entry of product of two matrices you look at the ith row of the first matrix here what is the what are the matrices this is one matrix and this is the other matrix right so you look at the ith row of the first matrix and you look at the jth column of the second matrix is that fine right? yes so that is just the rule right so so and you you take their products yeah? so it will be summation the ith row of a right so maybe i'll not write summation symbol first what i'm trying to say is that you look at the ith row of a and first column and then you look at the second matrix okay and you are looking at the um, the jth column of that so you look at the first entry of the jth column okay and similarly you keep going you look at the ith row second column right and of course one writes this in the form of a summation and you understand it goes on so you can have that picture right this is the ith row and this is the jth column and we are multiplying these with these right so i will just write it in the form of a summation which is much more convenient i and j are fixed okay we are not changing anything about i and j here means they are sort of they are there they are arbitrary but they are fixed so the k goes from 1 to n okay now we have to repeat the same thing and obviously uh, meanwhile we will uh, this we know we have a symbol for it which is how it should be because the numbers have to have a different impression on us than matrices so we have this small and capital and small yeah because a lot of it is about you know what impression do the symbols have on you they guide you as to how to think mathematics is all about having good notations and symbols in a way okay uh, yeah in a, in a way you will see that it is mostly becomes like that to a large extent and then it's now you want to understand the kjth entry of the of that matrix so you just do the same thing right you do the exact same thing you need to have a new variable but we'll do it no problem k goes from 1 to n now that b star c ka kjth entry i am trying to understand so nothing new right so i will be taking the kth row l will go from 1 and i will be taking the jth column so means l j is it correct yes this one kjth entry of this is this thing once again mm -hmm. Yeah. these two things are equal right yes yes 
No, I've just done the same thing like what a computer mm -hmm. does. Iterate, iteration, applying the same thing for a, right? So that's all. Now we have this. Now we want to, so now what will you do? You can now just say, okay, I will also write, because if you don't see what to do from here, right? Then you say, okay, okay, no problem. I'll just uh, write the IJF entry of this as well. You will write it and then you will show that those two summations are equal. Okay. So that's two that is certainly we can do. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can certainly do that, but uh, let us try to get there directly. So if you look at this summation that we have this summation, let us try to see what it is, okay? Yeah, so how do I write this? So there is this AIK and then for every K it is going, right? So if I take AIK and one second, so in this, when I have the ith row, and I'll be looking at the ith row of this. Okay. So, and that will be fixed, right? And ith row of that uh, would be like ith uh, row and jth column of B, where the J will range. And so I will write it, at yeah, this part you may not like, Okay, but then there is an easier way to do it also. But I'm trying to just, you know, challenge it and do it like this a little bit. Mm. Do you see that these two things are same? Yes. Yeah. Right. You see that like this AIK is appearing and then with this AIK, I will be, uh, yeah, you see. So, okay, let me, if I say it like, um, you know, in a nice, I mean, probably you can see and you can convince yourself, but like a proper way to say this can be, okay, I fix the L, okay, I fix the L and I change the K. Okay, I fix the L, I fix the L and I change the K, right? So that means that I can take the, this, then I can take this summation outside and I can bring this summation uh, before, right? So I can apply, I'll apply this summation, this K later. Right, so for, because what is happening, right? First you fix a K, what is happening in the first summation, right? You fix a K and then for that fixed K, you change the L, right? But then obviously you can fix the L and you can change the K, right? So for every K it's ranging. So you can fix the L and then you can change the K and then you can change the L. And that is what I'm doing in the second summation, right? And then you will see that when you write this is actually equal to this. When you do the same, they come here. But obviously you don't have to do like this. You can first write this 
expand this and you will see it will come out to be this and then you can argue that these two are same so you can see this first and then argue they are same i just tried to argue they are same uh, based on certain certain nice things that you can that it should come from an exchange of summations right so i i was guiding myself with some other kind of a formal intuition right that it should come from some commuting and some nice thing like that okay so this is the proof of associativity okay so now less than one minute is left so i'll just mail you a google meet link okay so if you can just join there i think because there is this four minute break now which one has to take and uh, uh, or we can just take a four minute break right you can just uh, go over this maybe right just think about this and then we can meet after four five minutes okay yeah just just uh, just uh, think about what we have done and see you think about the commuting also whether a b is equal to b a think about that kind of thing okay then we'll just meet in 5 minutes okay yeah 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 okay yeah